In addition to drawing out single copies of a mesh, you can also create curves to guide the placement of those copies. So let's take a closer look at it. So first, what I will do over here is that I will take a uh, IMM brush, a basic one. Let's go to the basic IMM brush. And I can take this uh, cone from here. So as the uh, recall or as a recap, you can just simply click on your item. Let me do one thing because this uh, model is subdivided. So I can go back to the geometry and delete the lower one. So I will keep the higher one on the scale. Okay. So don't worry about the subdivision right now because we will go into details. Okay. So here, what I will do is that I will just go and press here and create. And you can see that this is what we actually did last time. Okay, what if I don't want to create it manually just by clicking here and creating? I just want a curve and draw that curve, and I want all these follow along the, uh, that curve. So here, what I can do, I can first of all let me do one thing here. Let me press. Uh, the X over here to turn on the uh, my symmetry okay and then once the symmetry is on I can go back to my brush over here sorry to my stroke over here and then I will go to the curve now I can turn on the curve mode so as soon I will turn on the curve mode I can draw a curve over here just like this and you can see that those uh, horns are now on the curve. But this curve is very low risk. So what I can do, I can undo over here. And let's play with the curve settings here. Now here, uh, the curve step is quite a lot. This is one. So let me make it quite lower so that uh, they are closer to each other. And I will have a high res, uh, you can say, curve. So maybe point. 5 I will make it and then I will draw here so now you can see it's much more better and once I've done you can see that this um, like a cone is drawn over here so what else I can do here is that I can just move this curve and as soon you will see if I will move to this end you can see this blue um, cursor over there it is now blue color so that means I can simply move it wherever I, I want it and as this is symmetry it will affect the other side as well and let's see what else we can do with this so before going to any other option if you want to change this curve you can just simply uh, move it around okay because maybe you don't want that curve and what else you can do if you are not getting that quite result you can uh, you know undo any time and then you can move and let's see what else we can do here is that we can, I can go in the middle and you can see a green uh, cursor, a green circle, small circle over here. That means uh, this uh, green circle will create another point on the curve, which I can later on move wherever I want. Okay, so this is how I can change that as well. And I can reshape it to whatever I want. And again, as I told you before, if you're not getting the result, always you can undo and redo that again and create your own uh, curve the way you want it. So as you have seen, I can uh, simply move this curve and I can move uh, the middle part of it. But when I'm moving the middle part, the starting and, and, and the end of this curve is also adjusting. But if you don't want that, if you only want to um, affect the middle part so what you can do you can simply go in the stroke and what we can do here is that we can lock the start or lock the end or lock both of them so if I will lock the start and then I will go back here and if I will do any changes so you can see the start is pinned over here and it's not moving okay similarly if I will go here 
and unlock the start and lock the end so it will lock the end over here and this will be locked and it will not move and I can go back and I can lock both of them so this will lock both of them and when I'm reshaping they will not move they are now thin so if I don't want them to be locked simple I can just go back here in the stroke curve and unlock these options so this is uh, one thing that you can do uh, if you want to lock or unlock your curves over here but if they both are locked suppose if I will uh, let me lock them again and you can see they are locked they are not moving uh, at all but if I will go here and move it it will still move but the other end will be locked okay and if I will move it uh, from the middle so you can notice they are locked so that means you can still move it and either end will be locked so let me do one thing here let me uh, just move it around here okay and go back here in the stroke and unlock them now we have here elastic elastic what it will do it will create an elasticity so if i will turn it on and try to move this what it will do is that it will stretch it so you can see that it is stretching this is staying on its own place okay and uh, this part is just stretching and you can see that none of them is locked so it's just stretching this end because i'm just pulling uh, from here and if i will go to this end and start stretching so you can see that it is stretching this end okay just like you stretch an elastic but this uh, end stay as it is so this is the elastic which uh, stretches uh, either end and one of the end will stay pinned basically it's not pinned it will not move it will not affect but the one that you're pulling it will be affected now there's one more here which is liquid now you can turn them both on but i don't want that usually uh, it's better to keep uh, one of them on so i can go to the liquid now what the liquid will do you have noticed that in elastic it stretches in a linear direction like a straight direction but in liquid you can do that but at the same time you can move around as a free form okay any one of this side so you can see that i'm just moving around just like this and it's creating a liquid liquidy effect over here okay so this is quite a good when you want to create a free form over here okay and if you want to increase or decrease your uh, size of your curve so that's how it will come handy over here so i can turn it off and you will see that it's quite off the body because i was moving in one direction i can just move it back as well okay so easily you can fix it but as you have a longer curve it takes a little, little time to put them back where you want so it takes a time to do that okay so in this case i would rather undo and redo instead of uh, changing uh, my whole curve okay so this is how basically your curve uh, have these tools let me oops, let me put this here so now you will notice that my draw size over here is 64 so if i will change my draw size a little bit uh, bigger than 64 like suppose 100 and if i will click on the curve so what it will do is that it will change the size of the IMM over here. So it's a quite, uh, you know, a nice way to work on your uh, the project. Like anytime, if you want to change the size of them, you just have to go there and you can easily change the way you want it to be. Like you, if you want it bigger or smaller, you can change that. So if I will go smaller, I can, if I click on it, so you can see that it will become smaller. But you have to be a little careful uh, if you will click over here it will start drawing uh, the other curve over here so you can undo that just like what i did right now but i don't want it to be too uh, small so i will undo that one now another thing which is interesting we can do is that if we click uh, and drag on this and then hold the control like suppose if i'm clicking and dragging oops 
I think I have to change the size here, 64. Now suppose if I'm clicking and dragging, and if I will press control like while clicking and dragging, so what it will do is that it will start, you can see twisting that uh, curve, and you can see that wherever I'm going, it is kind of twisting that. Okay, it's getting a little wider, uh, like wilder over here. So let me change the size and then I will try to do that. So I will try to move it. Then I will press con uh, control and you can see that it is wherever I'm going, it is twisting that uh, part. Okay. So I, I will move this one. And if I press control and you can see that it is twisting. So this is quite uh, like, you know, a nice way to twist some of these uh, IMM brushes if you want, otherwise you don't have to do this. So you might have noticed that when I was twisting, it was creating some sort of uh, snapping awkwardly. Like suppose, let me do that again just to show you around if I'm uh, moving this and twisting at the same time. So you can see it is snapping awkwardly. So how we can avoid that? Let me undo all the twists that I have done. We can fix it by going to the stroke option over here and there is a snap option here. I can unclick uh, this one or you can say I can just deactivate it. Now if I will try to move it around and press control so you can see that it is not snapping and very smoothly it is twisting. So snapping will uh, will give you that snappy effect which was happening before. Without snap, you can have the smooth twist over here. Now creating curve with stamped out copies of an object, just like what we did right now, is one way to use curves. So if you're happy with this uh, way, um, which looks like right now, we can lock it in by just clicking anywhere on the model. Uh, that's away from the curve like suppose here if I will click it and then you can see that it will be locked in so there is no curve on it anymore so it will become and uh, like a sub tool by itself but it is attached you can separate it uh, if you want like if I will you will see this I will probably turn on my uh, like poly frame you can see it's a sub tool so you can split it just like we studied in the last class but I don't want to do it right now so now you uh, you see the curve has disappeared and now we are just left with the raw geometry. Now stamping out copies of the model along a curve is definitely one way to use this. However, there's another type of curve which that creates one continuous surface. So let me do one thing. Uh, let me go here in the split and split group split over here. And I can just go to my dog and hide this one. Okay, so I'm back to my dog mode, but you can see that it is all masked, so I can just press control here, drag, so I will remove the mask. Now, let's see uh, how we can use that brush here. So simply, I will press B over here on my keyboard, and then I will have all these brushes. I will press C again. So you will see that there are a lot of curved brushes over here, curved bridge, curved lathe, curved multi-tube, and all these. So basically what I want you all is uh, go ahead and play around with all of these on your own. However, there's a few that are particularly interesting, which is one like the curve strap snap. So I like this one. I, uh, I use this curve uh, brush most of the time. So I will just click over here. The shortcut is uh, 8, so BC8. So you just have to press uh, BC8 and you will get that. Uh, brush so B C oops B C and eight okay so this tool is quite good if you want to create some straps like a, a bag strap or you know seat belt or those kind of things so what it actually do is that it creates one continuous piece of geometry along the entire curve like suppose I think the size too huge let me change this. And if I will draw something here and leave my mouse so you can see that there is a continuous geometry which is nicely conforming with my model over here. 
okay which is a good thing about uh, this one here so just like other brush we can manipulate this one also we can move it around as you can see that Oops. okay and but you will notice that it is snapping a lot over here okay this is where it becomes a little complicated okay and sometimes not always going to be a smooth transition just like you can see over here uh, how i'm getting the result over here okay so always what i do is that if i want to change if, uh, if i want a big change so what i will do i just undo that and then create my own so i will leave it right now so as you can see this allows you to create a new and interesting geometry that's attached to your surface of your model just it's, it's really nicely conform as i showed you before so now if you want to change the size of the strap what you can do is that same way we did it before we can make it smaller just click on it okay it will change the size or we can make it bigger even and click on it it will resize it it will make it bigger so and you'll notice the size updates very quickly just like we did before so the thickness has now changed to reflect the size of the cursor as well so if i reduce this and click on it you will see the thickness of it also changes relative to the size of the brush so that's one more thing you have to uh, check okay so if you want uh, that quite a bit smaller or bigger so you can just drag down and click on that again and uh, it resets with the smaller pieces of geometry and everything changes accordingly so all right let's go ahead and lock this one by clicking anywhere here okay and we have it so what i can do is that i can just remove the mask by just uh, dragging shift uh, control drag outside so uh as I showed you, we have a lot of curved brushes, so you have already noticed several other different type of brushes, and they all behave basically the same, using the same principles of creating and modifying curves. But they create geometry in a different and interesting way, so I highly recommend that you go ahead and play around with these and see how they work on your own. So I hope you have understood about the curved brushes now. Keep practicing on, uh, practicing on them and see what kind of results you will get. And thanks for liking my videos and sharing it with your friends. So I hope you will keep sharing this to your friends also so I can get more and more subscribers. This is what I actually need. And also watch my videos online. And if you like this video, so please uh, hit on the like button and also press the bell icon. And take care of yourself and we will meet in the next lesson.